Hi, and welcome to Rock Feegs. This week we're going to be talking about weathering and soil. If you'd like to join the list of supporters that makes this channel possible, please go to patreon.com slash feegs. Mechanical weathering. Rocks weather when they are exposed to surface conditions, which in most cases are quite different from those at which they formed. The main process of mechanical weathering includes exfoliation, when a mass of rock is exposed by weathering and removal of overlying rock, there is a decrease in confining pressure on the rock, and the rock expands and cracks. Frost wedging, the process by which water seeps into cracks of rock, expands on freezing and enlarges the cracks. Frost wedging can result in large talus slopes at higher elevation. Salt crystallization affects rocks in a similar way. When salt water seeps into rocks and then evaporates on a hot sunny day, salt crystals grow within the cracks and pores of the rocks. The growth of these crystals exerts pressure on the rocks and can push grains apart, causing the rock to weaken and break. Finally, plant growth can also mechanically weather rocks as roots force their way into even the tiniest cracks and exert tremendous pressure on the rocks as they grow. Chemical weathering. Chemical weathering takes place when minerals within rocks are not stable in their existing environment. Some of the important chemical weathering processes are hydrolysis of silicate minerals to form clay minerals, oxidation of iron and silicate and other minerals to form iron oxide minerals, or when the minerals dissolve completely like in the dissolution of calcite. The products of weathering and erosion. The main products of weathering and erosion are grains of quartz because quartz is resistant to chemical weathering clay minerals, iron oxide minerals, rock fragments, and a wide range of ions in solution. Weathering and formation of soil. Soil is a mixture of fine mineral fragments including quartz and clay minerals, organic matter, and empty spaces that may be partially filled with water. Soil exists within the top few tens of centimeters of the surface and is important for sustaining plant growth. Soil formation is controlled by climate, especially temperature and humidity the nature of the parent material, the slope because soil can't accumulate on steep slopes, and the amount of time available. Typical soils have layers called horizons, which form because of differences in the conditions with depth. Soils are classified by their varying content of silt, clay, and sand, as seen here in this ternary diagram known as the USDA Soil Texture Diagram. Let's say you have a soil that appears to be 45% clay and 55% sand. Plotting them on this diagram shows us that we have what we would call a sandy clay loam. Sand and silt are dominated by quartz fragments, while the clay component is dominated by clay minerals. Loam is defined as a soil consisting of mostly silt and sand with a smaller amount of clay minerals. So as you can see, with 55% sand, and a lesser amount being clay, that's what makes this soil a sandy clay loam. Soil horizons. The process of soil formation generally involves the downward movement of clay, water, and dissolved ions, and the common result of that is the development of chemically and texturally different layers known as soil horizons. The typically developed soil horizons are known as O, layer of organic matter, A, the layer of partially decayed organic matter mixed with mineral material, E, the alluviated or leached layer from which some of the clay and iron have been removed to make a pale layer that may be sandier than other layers, B, the layer of accumulation of clay and other elements from the overlying soil, C, the layer of incomplete weathering. Weathering and climate change. The geological carbon cycle plays a critical role in the balancing of Earth's climate. Carbon is released into the atmosphere during volcanic eruptions. Carbon is then extracted from the atmosphere during weathering of silicate minerals. And this is eventually stored in the ocean and in sediments. Atmospheric carbon is also transferred to organic matter, and some of it is later stored in soil, permafrost, and rocks. Our use of geologically stored carbon, or fossil fuels, upsets this climate balance by releasing carbon back into the atmosphere that would have otherwise been sequestered back into the earth. By doing so, we are changing the climate faster than has ever happened in the past. Thank you for joining us this week. I hope you enjoyed this video on weathering and soil. And if you did, please like and subscribe. And with that, I bid you adieu and cheers.